it looks like you're about to have one hell of a day. Hi, I'm Ella of a Day from Drag Race UK, and I'm not in drag today because I am putting funny man himself, Tom Allen, into drag. Have you done drag before? Um, the question. No, I've, I've dragged my feet before, but that's um, largely just because I've been um, reluctant to leave the house. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm quite, I'm looking forward to it, but yeah. I, I don't know what it's going to unleash. I think you're going to look beautiful, just saying. Mm. Uh, I can tell already from your face shape. So let's get into it, shall we? Oh, well, let's do this. Yeah. I look like Jerry Halliwell and Scylla Black melted down <laughs> and reformed into Adele. This is Queen for a Day for Attitude's Pride at Home Festival. Sponsored by Washington DC, Visit the USA and Hayes Travel, where we are giving people the chance to live their drag fantasy for the first time. Tom, we're almost done with your drag makeover. You've kept your beard. Why are we keeping the beard? Um, because um, I always like a, a, a drag, drag beard. Beard drag? Well, every gay person needs a beard, don't they? Am I right? Hold on. That's true. Gosh, do you think I'd suit having an actual beard? I mean, RuPaul's got Michelle Visage, so. Oh, yes. I'd like to be married to, um, I'd like to be married to a beard, like something like Margaret or something. Bearded lady uh, type from, from the circus. Oh, yeah. do you know what? I do feel a bit like I'm in Cirque du Soleil in this. <laughs> it's giving. It's giving Cirque, that's what, giving that's what drag queens say now. Yeah. It's giving, it's giving. It's serving Cirque du Soleil. Serving it's Cirque du Soleil realness. Real, realness, that's it, giving. Well, the key, the buzzword. Key, yeah, yes. Queen, yes. slay, slay, Henny. Slay, Henny, I'd forgotten about that one. Yeah, Henny, so I always think is what, um, it's what I call H&M. Henny's, oh, Henny's yeah, and yeah. Moritz. Mm -hmm. I still call it that. Oh, I'm old, old queen. <laughs> okay, Tom, I want to know what your first Pride experience was. Well, um, it was when I'd just come out and um, I didn't really know how to go about Pride, so I just turned out. And I didn't know who to ask, so I just went on my own, which is a bit tragic, Aww. isn't it? And um, I didn't realise that to march in the parade, you had to register. But somehow I just wendled my way around <laughs> those people in, in high-vis vests. Oh, yeah. Because if you, just talk, if, you, if you just talk authoritatively back to them, yeah. they'll listen. I went in with high-status gay energy, mm -hmm. even at the age of like 20 or whatever, and ended up marching with, um, I think I was marching with British Airways, actually. Go on. Yeah, and um, still didn't get an upgrade. Ah, um, and did you end up hanging out with new people, or did you just stay like, on your own? I just stayed on my own. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing about Pride, though, is actually I felt very safe and I felt very welcomed. But at that point, I didn't know enough people. And so um, as I got older and went back to Pride, what I realised is how lovely it is because people say hello to each other mm -hmm. and you have friends. And, and the atmosphere of Pride is always that uh, everybody's open and everyone's going, oh, nice to see you. Oh, hi, how are you? Oh, isn't it lovely weather? Yeah, and yeah. everyone has a lovely chat. Oh, that's and I like that. And so then you feel like everybody... Everybody knows your name. What's the best pride you've ever experienced? Oh, that's a tough one. I would say my my favourite ones have been, I think, the American ones I've been to, mm -hmm. actually. And the best pride experience I ever had was going on the the one that Attitude organised oh, yeah, yeah. on Virgin. The infamous The infamous trip. one, going <laughs> to World Pride. Because I just think, you know, flying is stressful, isn't it? And going through a metal detector, for some of those leather daddies, is a real, it's <laughs> an ordeal. It's isn't an it, ordeal really? for them. Yeah. I mean, it sound, it sounded like a, a percussion <laughs> orchestra going <laughs> through. For some of them, jangling away, uh, bits jangling you didn't know could jangle. No, and bits you can't it even like, see. It was like Evelyn Glennie playing away, <laughs> and the, and so I just think it's lovely to get some, some, some people together. And travelling and making it fun again. Yeah. I was felt like it was proper, proper what life is all about. Yeah. And amongst some incredible and diverse people as well, I imagine. Yeah. Yes. If, that, if those are all words for drunk, then yes, <laughs> I would say everyone was definitely drunk. No, everyone was in great spirits. That was what was wonderful about it. Yeah. Um, and um, everybody was just celebrating. And actually, there's there's times in our world when it's difficult to celebrate, I think. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we get a moment just to shine bright like a diamond, mm -hmm. then why not do it? Are you going to World Pride in Washington next year? Well, I would love to go. I have been to Washington DC before. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it's a fabulous city mm -hmm. with amazing culture, amazing food, amazing people. 
And do you know what's really remarkable about it? It's not like a, another, it's not like other American cities. It's like this kind of magical town where you just turn a corner and you're like, oh, there's the White House. Oh. oh there's the Franklin Memorial. There you go. If you're going, I'm coming. And that's what she said. And that's what she <laughs> said. Do you go to a lot of drag performances, like your time off? Um, I, well, I've always loved going to a, a queer space, otherwise known as a gay bar, where a drag queen comes on and I just think, as a stand-up myself, yeah. I have so much respect for a drag queen who gets up there on a high, the stage is always so high up as well. Mm -hmm. Very, like, I think that must be frightening yourself. And you've got your high heels on. I'm amazing those, I'm, I'm amazed those, those wigs don't get caught in the lighting rig. <laughs> That's a fire hazard with all that hairspray. Yeah. Then you do a song. Then you do a bit of stand-up. Then you talk to the crowd. Yeah. Then you do a game show. Then you do um, a, another bit of stand-up and a competition yeah. and throw something out to the audience. Thanks very much, good night. And it's to gaze. Yeah. The most difficult audience in the world. Lots of heckling. So you have to be Lots ready for of that. heckling with yeah. those smug little gays with their popped collars. You must be used to that sort of crowd too, right? Um, I've actually banned gay people from coming to my show. Right. Pink pound. <laughs> I say look after the pennies. What drag names have you come up with so far? Well, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because it is. um, I've thought of a few. Mm -hmm. um, fluffy curtains. Stunning. I mean, we were talking about Washington DC. What about? Jackie, Jackie Oh No. I like that. That's good. Um, okay. The Lincoln Memorial. We're just going to name places now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pennsylvania 6500. Um, what's, yeah. what's the big one that sticks up? What's the big pole that sticks up in the middle? That's a memorial, That's my isn't boyfriend. it? Um, what are, what are you going to choose Don't make me then? laugh, it'll all run. <laughs> then this then this sort of look like an absolute crayon box. <laughs> What? Out of all of those incredible choices, have you come to a final decision? Well, you, I feel like you're my drag mama, can I call you that? You can call me whatever you want, sweetie. M Mamas uh, in the past. I, I like fluffy curtains, but I mean... Yes, but what name do you think I should have? <laughs> <laughs> You're hell to work with. That's L a good name. L to work with. L to work with. <laughs> Your dreadful niece. That's actually very good. L to work with. <laughs> Right, that's enough. Silly, silly chatter. Oh, thank God. Let's crack on and get you finished up. You're looking fabulous in your Brighton birdcage dress and earrings. Thank you. Um, why don't you take a look at yourself in the mirror? The big reveal. Oh my God, I look like Jerry Halliwell and Scylla Black melted down and reformed into Adele. You're in full drag, so now we need to know what is your drag name? Well, we toyed with Lakeside Shopping Centre Thurrock. Yep, strong. Ashford International fluffy curtains. Mm -hmm. But I think now I'm complete, I realise my name is in fact Rosebud. <laughs> She's a girl about town. She's open to anything. <laughs> I think a lot of people find that when they try drag they feel very glamorous, don't they? And they feel very powerful. Uh -huh. I actually feel like I'm, I'm quite abrasive. I've had a hard life. Things haven't gone well for me. Maybe I work in a pub. Somebody who's like, well, do you want a double for a pound? Or, um, I told you, it's closing time, we ain't serving no more. I told you, you're not welcome in here anymore. Not with that dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Rosebud, where can we see you performing? Well, I perform everywhere I go, but one day I hope I'll be performing at World Pride. <laughs>